Hey everybody, I'm Derek Porter and these are my co-hosts Manny and the Dude and today we're going to be discussing our top 10 games you can talk about for about an hour, give or take. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and the games on my list are mainly, these are games that I've just been playing a lot of lately and so I'm going to start off with my number 10 which is editing the board game. Now I've been playing this one a lot and let me tell you just to warn you, this one is long. It involves, I mean, you watch people playing this and it's like, it looks like they're just sitting there staring and nothing's happening. You'd probably be really, really good at this one. Um, no, you shut up. Wait, stop. Your mic's on upside down, you dummy. <sighs> Seriously? Try to do something nice. Okay, start over. Hey everybody, Derek Porter here, and it's time once again for one of my Once in a Blue Moon Q&As. Uh, the office is completely empty this week as Tom, Sam, and Z are all at the gathering of friends. And uh, Kenny is actually preparing for uh, a six-week trip to China. So uh, I've been here all by my lonesome cranking away at videos. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask me any questions you like about me, about my role at the Dice Tower, whatever. Um, just know that if I don't answer your question, it's because either I missed it in the chat, or uh, I didn't see it, or I just didn't want to answer it. So anyway, but before I take your questions, I got a funny story I want to share with you guys. So I recently uh, bought a new bag to carry some board games to our weekly game meetup on Tuesday nights. And it's one of those uh, Cajon Chromacast padded uh, gig bags to transport, like the, the Cajon, it's a percussion instrument, that box drum that the percussionists will sit on top of and they, they, they beat on the front of it. Um, so uh, th those things are the perfect size for like the ticket to ride sized game boxes. And so I thought, hey, that's a great thing to, you know, that's a great way to transport some games because I keep bringing games to game night and my bag was getting just a little weighted and I was concerned that the straps were going to rip off, so I got a new bag. However, some of the, uh, some games don't always fit in that bag. For example, Rising Sun does not. So I still occasionally will, will put a few of the bigger ones in my duffel. So I'll take my Cajon bag over my shoulder and my duffel. Anyway, so I was going to Tuesday night uh, meetup, uh, I think it was like maybe a week and a half ago or something like that. And I had my bag and my two bags. And just a few doors down from uh, the uh, Cool Stuff location where we have our meetup, uh, there's this really good uh, Jamaican restaurant. It's kind of a hole in the wall mom and pop shop place. So I use, uh, frequently I will stop in there and get dinner before I head over to the meetup. So I'm in there and um, and I'm waiting for my order, and uh, the guy behind me sees all these bags and asks me, oh, it looks like you're getting ready to go play. Well, wh where's it happening? And so I said, oh, well, yeah, there's a, there's a game store a few doors down, uh, you know, and there's a, there's a meetup every Tuesday night. Uh, it's open to everyone. You're welcome to come by if you like. And he's all, huh, really? Like, there? And I was like, yeah, you can just go in there. And it's like we, the, we people get, get together and play board games, and, uh, yeah, it's a great time. And he's all, Huh? I said, you're welcome to come by and, and, and hang out for a bit if you like. And he was like, uh, I don't know, that's not really my scene, but thanks anyway. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that's a bummer. And then, I, so I left, I got my order and I left the store. And then it dawned on me like halfway through. I was like, I wonder if he thought that I, because of my cajon bag and my duffel bag that I carry, my duffel bag when it's full of games looks like a drum hardware bag that drummers will transport like cymbal stands in and things like that. I'm wondering if he thought that I was a musician and I was playing at the game store <laughs> a few doors down and I'm thinking if that's true I wonder if well, what would have happened if he actually came in expecting to be like a musical performance in the game store but huh. Anyway I thought that was kind of amusing so on a side note if they ever make those cajon bags with some like you know geek oriented art on them like fantasy or sci-fi I mean somebody get on that there's an untapped market there anyway so uh, let's see if we got any questions twitch is dead oh yeah yeah there's 
hardly any chat in Twitch for sure. Yeah, I'll be taking questions from both the YouTube and the Twitch, whichever I happen to scoop questions out of. Uh, so we'll start away here. Oh, audio and video seems good. Oh, great. That would have been really awkward if I told that whole story and nobody heard it. Um, so, uh, Derek, name a game you would rather play with the blow-up dude than the guys. Um, the dude is really not fun to play games with. I know it looks like he's a happy, loving, you know, fun-loving guy, but he's he's angry. Um, so I would rather just not play games with him. Period. Let's see. Uh, oh, greeting, Kabuki kid. Thank you for being here. It's always nice to see you, or see 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 that you're here. I don't, we don't see you, you, but you can see me anyway. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, he thought I was in the band. Okay, so. Oh, Otter Kramer says, I use the same type of bag that pizza delivery people use. Perfectly square and good straps. Oh, that's, I never thought of that. A pizza delivery bag. Huh. I don't even know where you would find one of those. Um, so, is Splendor any good? Saw it at Target today, but passed. Well, I couldn't tell you because I have passed on Splendor myself. I've done a little bit of research on that game. It just does not look very interesting to me. Um, I mean, I'm open to trying it, but I, I have yet to play it, and it's not one that I was... I, I'm not seeking that game out. Um, but I, I, I decided to drift towards, uh, like, Azul and Sagrada instead. Hey Derek, curious if there's ever been any talk of crediting people with the photos in the top tens and such. Um, because we kind of do it like a news, like it's kind of like, like basically once like certain pictures get up like online about certain things, unless they're like explicitly like watermarked and things like that, um, basically the internet it can be kind of like free game. Um, so as far as I know, no, because that was one of the first questions I had when I started, but anyway. Uh, what do you eat for lunch today? Will we see another lunch unboxing? <laughs> I thought about that. I just had a boring, uh, it's my usual lunch I bring in here. Uh, it's a little like, uh, either I get these little salmon or, or uh, tuna packets and I just make a little sandwich out of it. Uh, so I just, I, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't as interesting as when I had the uh, chicken chop chop. Uh, according to Twitch's Twitter, they're looking into why the site is dead. Huh. I did not know Twitch was dead. Interesting. Um, but there's chats populating, so that's good. All right. Do you ever think about changing contents of game boxes while the gang are away? Do the team ever play tricks on each other? Um, so here's the funny thing is, in all honesty, if I went and, like, swapped around content in games, uh, I don't think, for the most part, nobody would know until, like, Dice Tower Con or the cruise, because at least as far as I can tell, it's not like a lot of the games get played on a regular basis that are here in the office. And we usually ship those out to be part of the uh, uh, checkout games li library at Dice Tower Con and the cruise. So if I did that, the only people I would be affecting would be the people checking that game out at a library, and that would be a headache. So no, I would never consider doing that. Um, as far as playing tricks on each other, not really. Um, I think I've talked about this before on a live Q&A. There's really not a lot of room to do practical jokes. We, like, we, we kind of have an unspoken rule that we don't play practical jokes on each other that would hinder someone's uh, workflow because we have, you know, we're, we're on, you know, we gotta keep, gotta keep pushing the content out. There's a lot, we have a massive queue of games and it's just like there's not a lot of time to kind of stop and go, hey, wouldn't it be funny if? Um, but you know, on the it's, it, on the occasion, we'll leave something funny on each other's desk or something like that. But we never do anything that would be like, "Oh, hey, let me set you back a couple hours by, uh, you know, distracting you with this odd practical joke." Uh, let's see. What have you been playing recently besides editing the board game? Uh, actually, just let's see. Uh, just this last Tuesday, I played Rising Sun, which is kind of my favorite game I'm jamming on right now. That's the game like I, I I wish I had more time to play more of, and I'm probably going to play it again on Saturday. I'm having some friends over, and it will likely get played. I mean, it's it, it all depends if everybody wants to play it, obviously. But um, I'm pretty sure everyone's pretty enthusiastic about playing that. So uh, that's kind of like the one I'm really, really jamming on right now. And I also just picked up the new edition. Uh, I got it at Gamma, uh, or 
I saw it at Gamma and ordered it immediately because you don't, don't really buy games at the Gamma trade show. Um, uh, the new Manhattan, the reprint of Manhattan. I never played Manhattan before and I demoed it at Gamma and really had a good time with it, so I bought that. Um, so those are kind of the games that are sort of, uh, you know, at the forefront of uh, what I'm hankering to get played. Are you a Florida native? Are you from there? Do you live far from the Dice Tower? No, I am not a Florida native. I am originally from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I was born and raised there and I lived there my entire life until I packed up my family and moved down here to Homestead. Um, so yeah, I haven't, I've done more traveling probably in the last two and a half years I've been at the Dice Tower than I've done probably in my lifetime. I just never really went anywhere. So, uh, let's see, still working out your 80s, 90s road trip playlist. Uh, well, I've got a 90s playlist. But it's mainly because of songs I like to play in rock band. Me and my wife play a lot of uh, Rock Band 4 on the Xbox One. And uh, we, we buy a lot of the 90s era DLC because those are our teen years. And so it's, we, we like all the goofy 90s stuff. But that's about the extent of a uh, 90s playlist that I have. I don't really do a whole lot of 80s stuff. I like Talking Heads, but that's about it. Uh, if you had to team up with someone in a game, who will you choose? Tom, Sam, Z, or someone else? Uh, probably Sam. Because when Sam gets you in his crosshairs, it's, it gets ugly. And so I'd rather be on the other side of that gun barrel, if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, hello, D-Rock. Oh, wow, D-Rock. No one's called me D-Rock in a long time. It's from, that's, f wow, that's from a long time ago. But, uh, let's see, Splendor is quite popular, so I wouldn't feel the need to jump on it. You can likely, oh, that wasn't directed to me, but thank you, Kabuki Kid. Uh, so do you have to go game at the end of a really stressful day? Um, if I have the chance to, um... Usually how I de-stress is, well, lately it's, it's just been kind of, I've been, I've been taking a lot, a lot of projects at the house lately, so uh, I haven't really done a lot of like, oh, I'm going to go home and, and game or anything like that. Uh, lately, my wife is playing through Super Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch, and so occasionally, she like, has like 700 some moons now. And occasionally, when she gets stuck on a few of the harder courses, she'll ask me to come and help her. And so I've helped her get like 20 or 30 of those. But I've been mainly watching her play that. So I haven't got to play it myself because I've been pretty busy. But I've been living vicariously by watching her play it. So, um, Did you see any good movies recently? Did you see Ready Player One? Yes and yes. I really enjoyed Ready Player One. I had not read the book. I had heard about the book, and I kind of, when someone described it to me, I was like, oh, okay, it kind of sounds like that's interesting. I'll, I'll maybe get around to reading that at some point. Um, and then I saw the movie, and I thought the movie was really fun. I know that it's kind of gotten mixed reviews and stuff like that. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it. It did actually encourage me to go. I've been listening to the audiobook while I've been working on these projects at the house. So... Um, and so far, yeah, there is definitely some huge differences, but uh, I'm, I'm enjoying both. I, I really, really, really like that movie. It was a lot of fun. Now, granted, I don't get out to see movies very often, so I, I, it's entirely possible I was just happy to go see a movie. <laughs> so, um, all right. What games would you recommend for your four-year-old, nine-year-old, and an adult? The four-year-old has learned King of Tokyo, Ice Cool, and Catan Jr. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm not... Probably the best person to speak to that because I my I have two four-year-old twins um, and they're struggling. Like right now, they kind of play Santorini. Like they don't understand the rules, but like I explain, move a worker and they move a worker and then they build a block. But I don't think they're like grasping like how to strategize or think ahead or anything. But um, as an activity, uh, Santorini's done very well for my kids. And so if your nine-year-old is willing to, uh, you know. Uh, to, to kind of stoop down to your four-year-old's level, I think Santorini might be a, a good activity. Because um, I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm the only one in the office that thinks so, but I do think Santorini actually plays, I like the three and four player game. I think it's kind of fun, so. 
Uh, if you would get your own dice tower figure, which number die would you be? I don't know yet. Um, Tom didn't make it sound like more mascot drawings were coming. Oh, yes, that is, uh, that is something he's working on. Uh, what did you do for work before the Dice Tower? What college did you go to in my major? Uh, I, well, I was a professional audio engineer. Um, that was pretty much all I did. I was, I, 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 I was slowly like, I, I got like my two year degree in, uh, I got my associates of science and then I landed a job as a audio engineer um, that I, I had, I held that same job for like 13 years. So, and it kind of became my career. So I slowly worked on finishing my degree, you know, like basically school kind of became secondary to work because I kind of already had my, my uh, a career in my field of choice. So I just kind of wanted to finish my degree over time. So I, I worked on it and finally finished my degree in like 2010 um, at University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. And I got a degree in communication with an emphasis in digital filmmaking and recording arts, which is basically fancy words for, I can do TV. Um, so, yeah, but I, uh, I was an audio engineer and mainly doing live sound for bands and stuff like that. And I did events like corporate events and weddings and funerals and uh, church functions and yada, yada, yada. Um, and that's what I did right up until I, uh, uh, I lost my full-time gig. I was unexpectedly let go in 2015 and was trying to do contract work to make ends meet and couldn't find a consistent job. And then the Dice Tower thing happened and worked out. So here I am. Um, so let's see. What editing software, camera, microphones do you use for your videos? So, uh, Tom kind of has the dice tower. We're kind of a Mac house here. So we've got MacBook Pros with Final Cut Pro 10 on them. Uh, and as far as the cameras, they're Panasonic's. I'm trying. To, I'm blanking on the model number right now, but it's their 4K uh, camcorder. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't remember. I don't know. I'd have to like get up and go see what the model number is on the side. Um, so, but, but they're Panasonic camcorders, uh, which HDMI output, which is great, which is how we can do live stuff like this. And uh, we, for microphones, um, I expect right after I started, uh, right after I took the job with Tom, he had me order microphones for them. And I just, my entire career, I've loved Shure microphones because, I mean, there's not that there's anything wrong with, with other brands like Sennheiser. I've just always used Shure. So we use uh, the Shure QLX wireless series. And then on, uh, when we're out at conventions, we have these FP5, the Shure Wireless FP5, which are the ENG sets. They're, they're a little, like, they're, they're meant for, like, being on the go, wireless microphones for on the go. And this is, like, the low end of what they offer because the really nice uh, ENG stuff for, uh, is, like, super expensive. It's, like, like th could be, like, $3,000 a channel. So, um, so I got the low end stuff for that. But mainly, mainly it's Shure. And we have a Sennheiser shotgun mic that we use. I think the last time we used it, though, was at the Marathon uh, at Cool Stuff in Orlando. So that's pretty much all the gear we're using. And then, of course, for live streaming, we are using a live stream studio HD 550, which is essentially a PC custom built for that can take uh, up to four or five HDMI inputs. And you can do live graphics and role playback and things and stuff like that. Uh, that's what we use for all of our live events. How did the Dice Tower find you or you find the Dice Tower? Well, I was following the Dice Tower. I stumbled upon the Dice Tower when I first kind of got really into the hobby back in like 2009. And, uh, and so I was... Uh, the 2016 Kickstarter towards the end of 2015 was coming up and... Uh, yeah, he, he runs it in January. So yeah, January 2016, I saw that one of the stretch goals is they were hiring a video editor, and I was like, huh. I was like, well, I, I was trying to find a gig, and I was open to relocating to find a new job. So I was, and I had, I just, I, I wanted to do something. I was kind of done with doing uh, like uh, corporate ministry and church events. I was just kind of fatigued on that. Uh, so I was like, I want to kind of do something I want to do. I try to find something involved that involve like gaming, whether it be board games or video games. And then I saw they were going to hire an editor, and I was like, well, I don't know if I'm pretty sure that if they whatever salary they offer, they might not be able to afford 
someone with a family. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, it wouldn't hurt to apply and just see what happens. Um, but uh, things worked out a lot better than I expected. And uh, there was basically, I, I emailed Tom during the Kickstarter and said, hey, provided you hit the stretch goal, will you be accepting resumes? And if so, how would you like, you know, how would you like to receive those? And then he responded back with an email to everyone else that was, apparently, it sounded like it was like sent out to everybody else that was inquiring about the position. And um, it was basically like an email interview, so but like a questionnaire to fill out. So I did that. Then there was a phone interview. Then I had a phone interview with Sam. I probably would have had one with Z as well, but at the time Z was uh, ill in the hospital with some kind of, some kind of lung thing. Um, I don't know what was going on. I just remember that uh, that's the reason I wasn't going to be having a phone interview with him. And, um, and then I get a phone call from Tom saying that I was his first choice. And so I decided, okay, I'll take a couple days, talk it over with the family. And then we was like, all right, we're going to do this. And so we did it. And here I am. I love your Q&As the most, Eric. Anytime I see you're doing one, I tune in. Thank you, Graham Rempel. That makes me feel so good. Um, yeah, super thrilled. Uh, let's see, from, let's pull from Twitch here. Derek, what's your favorite Zelda Breath of the Wild weapon? Uh, just because I think it's hilarious, I love using the mop. But um, in all honesty though, I like going with anything that's a two-hander, just because I like swinging and hitting really hard. Um, I know they're slow, but that's, that's how I down most of the Lynels that I encounter. Um, I know you are a Nintendo guy, but did you play any of the OG Spyro games? And if so, are you excited for the remaster? I am. I've, I kind of missed out on Sony PlayStation. I didn't do. I didn't play a lot. Like I, I had a. I bought the little Discman looking PS1 model they did, and I had that for a while and played a few games that I was like, oh, I should check out. Like you know, I find that that's how I finally played like Mega Man 8, and I like dabbled in Final Fantasy VII and Chrono Cross, but I never actually played Spyro. So I'm kind of indifferent about Spyro. Uh, did you paint your Rising Sun minis? No, I would love to. I, I would love to paint any of my minis actually, but I just don't know where I'm gonna find the time. Uh, our, well, sort of the, uh, our resident painter at the Dice Tower, Vernon Piper, has offered to, to teach me and like kind of coach me on how to do it. It's just a matter of, well, I gotta get the supplies to do it, and I, I have a very small house, so I don't know where I would do it in my house, and I don't know where I would keep all this stuff, or my kids won't get into it, and it just it's you know, and it's a more space to take up in the house that I just don't have. So, I have loads of excuses for why I haven't done it, and it's mainly just because I haven't just prioritized it. But I'm not sure I'm gonna paint Rising Sun actually, because I think that the color scheme of the pieces is just really important uh, to the gameplay. Derek, your work has leveled up the Dice Tower a lot. Thank you, that's I aim to please. That's one of the things uh, I just wanted to do when I came on is I was like, I know that, because as a video editor, like I hadn't done editing since college because I did it for my degree and I did a few projects. Uh, I had, I, for a while I was editing uh, weekly videos for, uh, for my old job, but then I hadn't really done a whole lot of editing since like 2011. And Final Cut Pro has changed a lot <laughs> since I last used it. So getting back into it was like riding a bike. But I know that I, I was confident that I was like, I, I mean, for years I was, uh, my wife used to sit and watch some of the Dice Tower videos with me and she was like, it's like, she's like, wow, it's like their microphones, they just don't sound that good. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know exactly how to fix it too. You know, and she's like, yeah, sure you do. Um, so it was kind of fun that uh, you know, we used to talk about it. It's like, wow, I wish I wish I could just get them better microphones. And then now I now I did, and it's it's great. Have you been enjoying any Euro sort of games these days? I know they're not usually your type, but you never know. Yeah, there's been a few that I've been exposed to that I've kind of been like, hey, you know what, this is pretty good. But I'm I'm very picky. Um, but some of the ones that, that caught me by surprise was uh, Terraforming Mars, if, if that counts. I know, some, I, I know that's kind of polarizing for some of the Euro folks out there, but um, I really like that one. And I usually don't like big, long games like that either. Um, so I enjoyed Terraforming Mars. I really liked Legacy of the Testament of Duke de Crecy. Um, and I've discovered I really, I really enjoy like worker placement in general. So like I've got, I love Champions of Midgard. Um, yeah, so those are probably the Euro games that got my surprise. There's someone in our game group, Vince, who's trying to convince me to play Power Grid, and I keep telling him like I, 
uh, everything I've heard about that game it sounds like stuff I don't want. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad game. It just doesn't sound like it's in my wheelhouse. But so at some point, I'll give it a try, and maybe I'll see the light on it. But I'm just like, I every time the opportunity comes up, I'm like, ah, I'd rather play Blood Rage or something instead. But anyway, um, is there room for mini painting space at Dice Tower headquarters? Not really. Not really. Um, is there another hobby you like besides board gaming? Um, lately, I haven't really had time to do much outside of like board games and video games. That's kind of that's sort of like my entertainment, if you will. Um, so not really. I used to I used to play music. I I, I play guitar and bass guitar. Um, nothing fantastic, but I you know I, <laughs> I haven't I haven't brought out my my instruments in a long time. So. Oh, uh, will you be coming along to Essen in October? I believe as it stands right now, no. I don't think I'll be going back to Essen just because I don't think they really need me there. At least that's 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 kind of what I've been told, which is kind of a bummer because I you know just like anybody else I want to go, but I mean it's 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 a lot it's a lot of resources to send to send crew to Essen, and so it's sort of like we need you know Tom needs to take who he needs to be there. So, but as it stands right now, I don't think I'm going to Essen. Um, have you tried Orleans? I think you might like it. Oh yes, Orleans another one that I have. Yes, I, I I did. I went out and bought that one actually. And Orleans the Invasion has my favorite box art ever. I love the picture of the knight who's like attacking the invaders with the with the wheel of cheese. That is the funniest thing to me. I just thought, I salute that knight. It's like you're a knight in armor and you are repelling invaders by hurling a wheel of cheese at them. Love it. Uh, let's see. Have you heard any new songs lately that inspire you? New songs lately that inspire me. Um, gosh, no, not really. I really, actually, that's not true. Um, I, it's, it's been a while, but like right, uh, several months ago, I got the uh, brand new, one of my favorite bands of all time is Bare Naked Ladies, and I got their new album. And their uh, their single on it, um, which was a little a little more pop than I'm used to used to listening to, but it was just the lyrics were really good, and just for the season of life I was in at the time. Uh, and I am drawing a blank on the name of that song. Um, Looking up, I think the song is called Looking Up. Um, really like that song. Uh, what kind of guitars do you have? What amps do you use? I <laughs> guitars. I have. I have. Actually, I don't think I even have my acoustic anymore. I think I unloaded that before I moved. But I have a. I have a Fender Strat and I have a Fender Blues Deluxe amp, and that's live. I don't have. I haven't kept up with like. I don't have a pedal board or anything like that. Um, nothing fantastic, like I said. Um, have you ever done a top 100? Sort of. Once upon a time, long time ago, I had this crazy idea that I was going to try to do stuff on YouTube, and I was going to try to do some video game stuff. So I actually used Tom's method for compiling a top 100 to do my top 100 video games of all time. And so that list is sitting somewhere on my hard drive on my home computer. And I was going to do, I was going to try to shoot up a little vlog series and, and do that up. And it's one of the things I just never got around to doing. Maybe I'll still do it someday. I don't know. But that's the closest I've ever come. I don't think I could actually do a top 100 board games. I've probably played 100 board games, but I, I don't know. I just don't, you know, like, a top 100 to the other guys is different because they've played thousands of games, and 100 out of, a th out of thousands of games carries a lot more significance than, you know, me who's like, eh, here's 100 games I like, you know. <laughs> so... Alrighty. Uh, how long is your work day? I try to, for the most part, I try to keep my hours nine to five, and that's mainly for the sake of my family, um, because it's circumstances have changed since uh, since I started working at the Dice Tower. When I started at the Dice Tower, the Dice Tower was still in Tom's home, and so I had two days that I could work from home, and then two, uh, then three days that we were in the office, the office at his house, um, and so now that I'm not working from home. I'm extra conscientious, uh, extra extra aware of just how much time I could be spending when I was working at home that I would be working like, you know, in, down into dinner time, and I'm like, oh wow, I <laughs> haven't even seen the kids today, so 
I, I really stress to try to make sure that I'm kind of like, you know, in uh, around nine and then out around five. Um, occasionally I'll stay late, if, you know, if there's deadlines or something I got to get done or, if, you know, because sometimes the other problem I have too is if I want to do any maintenance work on the equipment, I have to do it when the other guys aren't here. So sometimes I'll like, you know, maybe stay late so I can work in here uh, when they're not here. But for the most part, I try to keep nine to five hours as best I can. And that's mainly just so I can make sure that I'm getting home at a reasonable time to see my family. So, uh, Pick one. Fireball Island versus Street Fighter miniature game versus Zombie Side Invaders. Hands down, I'm backing it. Fireball Island. Um, I, I'm curious about the Street Fighter miniature game just because I'm always like hey I want to see you know and it's like every time I see a video game get a board game adaptation I'm kind of like hey it's a chocolate and peanut butter moment for me I'm like all right you know it's like my you know it's like my roots are kind of coming into this other thing that I'm discovering in board games but I'm also well aware that they, they don't always do that well um, so I'm I'm optimistic but I haven't like backed it or anything and to be honest I am not interested in zombie side invaders I love zombie side black plague um, but I just have uh, based on what I've researched on the game so far I don't really see other than the change in theme I don't really see what it adds I don't know why I would want to own that when I've already invested so much so much <laughs> into zombie side black plague and green horde and at all so all right if you could pick something for restoration games to remake, what would you like to see them do? Well, um, I guess in the spirit of Fireball Island, uh, when I was a kid, I had this game, and it's, it's, oh, it's a horrible game, but I'm sure there's maybe, there might be something to it, but it was like one of those, it was one of those like toy games where there's like this, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like this buzzard that would fly around like Loop and Louie style, and you were rolling and moving around the board and trying to hope that the buzzard doesn't pick up your guy and, and carry him to some god-awful place. Um, but it's like, in the spirit of what they're doing with Fireball Island and kind of like reworking the, you know, the, the limitations of how board games worked at the time, maybe something like that. I mean, it's, I don't know. Off the top of my head, that's the only one I can come up with right now. I don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. I would love to see some sort of modernized rendition of Hero Quest, just because that's another game that's like part of my childhood. Um, but I know that that's stuck in some kind of legal legal limbo somewhere. Um, is there a game you will not play, even if it has a high rating and everybody is playing? Ethnos. I did not enjoy that game. And that's the one game that like I feel like I'm crazy because everybody loves that game. Like I've everybody I've talked to that's played that game loved it and I was just it, it just it, I don't know. I was like I don't I didn't see what was so great about it. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It just it is not grabbing me the way it's grabbing everybody else. <laughs> so um but I just have no desire to play that one again. No. Um, did you say chocolate and peanut butter analogies before you worked for Dice Tower? Is that something you picked up here? Um, yeah, I think so. I've always kind of said the chocolate peanut butter thing. But, but I feel like that doesn't everybody? <laughs> so, um, oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss some solo gaming questions? I'm sorry. Let me go back and find a solo gaming question. Uh, let's see. Good day from the Great Down Under. It's 5.30 a.m. here. Wow. Well, good day to you too, Team Lunicorn. Sorry, I'm going back trying to find a solo gaming question. Well, just ask me, ask me another solo gaming question. I'm sure it'll pop up here. And I'll, I'll, I'll watch for it. I'll keep an eye out for it. Um, what's your go-to headphones for listening to music? I actually just purchased some West Tone in-ears um, that I use also for work. I don't use them here um, just because... My headphones seen a lot of use and abuse here, so but like for some of my side work and things, uh, and just personally, I have some West Tone in ears uh, that I use. Uh, I just got those like, like three weeks ago, I think. So that's it. Um, let's see. 
Always have the idea of someone down the street just eating. Yeah, <laughs> good point, Kubuki Kid. Oh, yeah. I don't think I ever actually saw those commercials when they were running. I just know that that was what they were referring to. And I grew up loving Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And so I was like, yes, peanut butter and chocolate. Whoever came up with that idea, they deserve the paycheck. That's for sure. All right. Um, is there a game you will not... Oh, I already answered that one. Yikes. Um, if you're home alone, did you set up any traps? No, I didn't. Um, I was waffling on what I was going to do for my intro gag. I had a completely different idea that I just abandoned. And then I went to another idea and I was like, oh, that's a really good idea, but I don't think I can pull it off in the like three hours I had to prepare for this. So I whittled it down to what you saw <laughs> at the beginning of this. Um, favorite soda? Okay, I don't, uh, I, uh, for health reasons, I no longer, I try to avoid drinking soda, but when I did, my favorite soda of all time was the Canada Dry Green Tea Ginger Ale. I loved that stuff. I would, uh, I would uh, open a can and then squeeze some lime juice in it, and, uh, oh, that was, that, that was my favorite. I, that's the, since I've given up drinking soda, that is, that's the one that I miss, is Canada Dry Green Tea Ginger Ale. I, don't even, I haven't even seen it in stores lately, so I don't even know if it's around anymore. But love that. Uh, all right. What are the best solo gaming games? I've never played one, but I have some time. Uh, well, I actually just played a game. I actually played a game solo last night. Uh, for fun, I was... Uh, I was editing one of Tom's videos, and uh, this is a spoiler because I don't think it's gone up yet, but basically he mentioned um, Stop Thief, and it, that Stop Thief has a cooperative, and I was like, that's right, it does, and I thought that that meant you had to buy like another, like a, like a, like they were sending out like a set of cards, like there was a, something you had to buy in a box somewhere to play cooperatively, but no, it's, it's just rolled into their app. And so I actually played the uh, Stop Thief Cooperative by myself last night. It was, it was kind of fun. And my boys were there watching me do it, and they were getting into it. I was having them push the code, the numbers in the app, and they were, it was a good time. Um, but as far as what I actually like enjoy playing, I, I actually don't mind doing Zombie Side Black Plague solo. So some there, I think, like a month ago, I just, a Saturday afternoon, I just set it up on, on the table and just decided to see if I could survive. And I think I... I completed one scenario by myself, oh, like controlling, I think, four heroes, or however many heroes, it is four, four heroes. And then, like, the second scenario, like, I died, like, instantly. I just kind of got, uh, the deck hosed me pretty bad. And I had, like, I was just overrun before I could even get any good items. But I think Zombie Side's probably my favorite, like, solo game. Oh, I also did, like, like right before I did Zombie Side, the last time I did a solo game was Terraforming Mars, which was okay. I don't know if I enjoy Terraforming Mars solo that much. Um, it just seems like there's a lot you like a lot of what's going on in the game that you kind of have to, you just ignore because there's there's no conflict. It's just you trying to complete the uh, complete the game before a certain I think it's like 14 turns or something. Uh, so hello from New Zealand with all the segments across board breakfast blender and throat punch lunch it seems like every conceivable angle on board games has been covered any ideas on what we are missing um not really i mean i think at this point any uh, from from my perspective and uh, you know i don't want to presume to be like the end all be all authority on the subject but i kind of feel like moving forward it's like you know to add to sort of without being just someone adding to the noise basically you have to tackle things that are much more niche like you know let's just do you know let's just do uh, content about board games that featured geographic locations <laughs> I don't know it's like I feel like just now things are just getting more and more niche and there's some really good ideas um, but I can't really think I mean huh, if if I had if I had a, a straight answer for you I would probably be doing it <laughs> um, Okay, let's see, jump over to Twitch. Derek is the only self-identified gamer I know who seems to primarily be uninterested in games. 
It's not that I'm interested in games. I just I don't have like the capacity to like try all the games. Like um, that is that is by the way one like unfortunate side effect I did not foresee about working for the Dice Tower is how little uh, I would be playing games compared to when, before I worked for the Dice Tower because uh, before I had my game group in Colorado and. Um, and I was like the games guy, like I was the one that was always watching for the new hotness and I'd go to the game store and I would always, you know, find the new things and, and uh, I'd bring them to our, our meetup and, and I was always the guy that was teaching the new, the new games and stuff like that. Uh, and obviously since working for the Dice Tower, well, no, I don't do that anymore because these guys have the scoops, you know, that are way, way far ahead of anything that I ever had. And basically, if we're playing any games here, it's for playtesting, for review. So, um... Yeah, so it's not that I'm interested in games, it's just that I just don't have the capacity to play games like I used to. And so now, when I do get to play games, uh, I really want it to be something that I'm, I'm certain I'll enjoy. Like, I've, I don't take near as many risks with games now anymore because, you know, sit down and, and, and hammer through a learning game of a, you know, you know like a, a game that's supposed to take 45 minutes could take up to two hours depending on how you know, how rough it is to teach or how, you know, in the case of review copies, if it's not very good. <laughs> um, so sometimes when I just want to sit and play a game, I just want to know I have fun. So I kind of, I, know, I kind of stick with the games that I know I'm going to like. So, all uh, right. So, any other questions here? Who is your favorite character in GoldenEye? Are you talking like... The character I would select when I would play multiplayer, or are you talking like my favorite character in the movie? Because um, I always would pick, there was this one, okay, so there was like, in the, for the video game, and I can't remember what it was, but there was like this, this cheat code you could put in that would basically unlock all of these extra, it was basically the development team's faces on Bond's tux, and there was one of them that actually looked kind of like me. Uh, uh, you know, at least, at least back when I was in high school, um, and so I was always that one. And I think it's, <laughs> I think the guy's name was Steve. <laughs> um, but as far as from the movie, um, I I actually really liked um, Sean Bean's character in that in that movie. Uh, Golden Eye is like one of my favorite all time Bond movies ever, and. I know some people don't like the Pierce Brosnan era, but that's the one that, like, that was who Bond was when I was growing up. So I'm kind of, you know, taken with, with the Brosnan era of Bond films. Um, so, yeah. And what's the deal with Sean Bean's name? It's like, it's like, it's like, they're spelled the same way. It's like Sean Bean. It's either Sean Bond or Sean Bean. You can't, you shouldn't be able to do it both. Anyway. Um... Are you in the same game group as the other Dice Tower team? Yeah, it's, we're all part of the same Miami board games meetup. Um, how many review games do you get pulled into playing a week? Uh, not as many as you think. Uh, and, that, 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 and that's mainly uh, kind of sort of by choice, I guess. Like usually at a Tuesday meetup, like uh, lately for the Tuesday meetups, I've been like showing up with an appointment to play something with somebody. Like uh, someone's texted me and said, hey, will you bring such and such game and we'll play it. And so I'll show up to the meetup and maybe I'll jump in a game with Tom that he wants to hammer through for review. And I'll do that while I'm waiting for folks to show up. So, But lately, you know, I have been playing a lot less of those because I've been showing up with like, all right, like, like last, uh, this last Tuesday I showed up to play Rising Sun with some people. Uh, and then Tuesday before that, I showed up and played Scythe with some people. Um, so uh, lately, I've been kind of like having these appointments to play games. And so I'm, it, it, there's been a lot less of me showing up going, all right, Tom, what you got? Um, so, uh, and that's just really, that's just why that is. Can you rank all the Smash Brothers games if you played all of them? Yes. Okay. I love Smash Brothers for Wii U. It's my favorite of the bunch. Um, now, I should stipulate that I am not a pro, like, I don't really care about the pro scene for Smash Brothers, so I don't worry about the whole, uh, you know, wave dashing and stuff like that. Um, I just like to play kind of the game on a casual level. I like to play with all the items on. I like the zaniness. I like the craziness. So, but Smash Brothers for Wii U, loved it, because um, it had, it sort of just had, like, everything. It's like, 
all these extra modes, all these features. I still haven't even uh, uh, explored everything in that game. Like, I still haven't messed with the uh, stage builder. Um, that's something I need to get back to. But they're probably going to make a port. I'm guessing there's going to be like a port for, of the same thing for Switch. I'm assuming so. I don't know. I have no inside knowledge. But I love the Wii U one. Um, and the 3DS one was fine. Just obviously, it wasn't as it didn't look as tight as the Wii U one because the limitations of the handheld. Uh, and then I and then I then I put Melee, and then Brawl, and then the original. Um, I I love the original, but I feel like every every game has been better because the original. Every time I've gone back to play the original, I just I realize wow, it really felt it feels clunky compared to the newer ones. Um, all right. Do the team ever cook in headquarters kitchen or just for snacks and drinks? Um, cook. I mean, we like microwave cook lunches in there, but we haven't like done like a formal meal or <laughs> anything in the kitchen. I think it's just because nobody wants to actually take the time it would take to clean up after doing a meal in the kitchen. So, <laughs> um, what is the one really old, weird board game you have in your collection that you will never throw away? Maybe a guilty pleasure game. It is, it is, uh, there's two actually. It is StarCraft Risk and World of Warcraft Monopoly. I was really into World of Warcraft for a, for a long time. I played, I played that game for the first eight years from its launch. And so, um, and it's like I don't even really like Monopoly that much anymore. But I'll probably keep that around just because I think it looks cool on the shelf. And I've never even played Risk, not even the StarCraft Risk, but I just, I, 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 I got those because I figure, wow, they're probably not going to be around for much long. They won't be out for very long. And if I ever want to go back and get them, I might not be able to. So I, I bought them to just have them. So those are like my, like, I guess if there's a, if I, I don't really have a shelf of shame anymore, but like those are the games that I have that I don't play. It's those, it's those two. Um... Oh man, your Smash Brothers list. I thought we could be friends. Melee by far the best, but Melee's so low res. <laughs> if they remade Melee, if they did an HD remake of Melee, I'd be all for that. But it is, it, it's just, I, I, that's, I have a hard time going back to play uh, Melee because it just it doesn't look as good as I remember, you know? Especially now that the TV I would play it on, <laughs> it would look pretty fuzzy. Um, favorite genres for books, movies, TV, into sci-fi or fantasy or other geeky pleasures? Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of a sci-fi buff. Uh, like I really liked Black Mirror. I really enjoyed Black Mirror. Um, but like it's uh, that's one like you know when the when the kids are around, I don't like to watch with with them in the room. So um, I want to check out. I'm hearing lots of good things about the new Lost in Space. So I, I really want to get around to watching that at some point. Um, would you ever want to appear on a Miami Dice review? No, because I don't really feel like I have anything significant to add to the conversation. I, like I said, my knowledge of like board games from a, like a reviewing standpoint, being able to critique, is not up to snuff. You know, it's like it would. It, there's, it, it would. It would. It would be like uh, I don't know. It, it would be like having a record producer commentate a boxing match. Like I just, <laughs> they don't have anything to add. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, have you ever played Monopoly by the rules as written? Yes, and I always insist so because that's how the game goes really long. Because growing up, my family always played with the free parking rule, you know, where basically you keep flooding money back into the player economy and the game goes on and on and on and on. As soon as I found out that that was not how you're supposed to play it, I was like, you realize Monopoly would not take so long if we didn't play with that rule. So, But then I found other games instead. Uh, are you a Twilight Zone fan? No, uh, n not. And th I just never really got into it. It was sort of before my time, and I've just never gone back and watched it or anything. My knowledge of Twilight Zone is what I've seen parodied in other shows. <laughs> so, um, any console you wish you'd never got rid of? Mine is the Dreamcast. Why did I sell it? Um, well, <laughs> so I have kept pretty much almost every console I've ever owned. Uh, like I said, I grew up on Nintendo, so I still have my NES, and I, I even have my top-loading one. Um, I still have my SNES. 
I actually, I think in a box somewhere, still have all my iterations of the Game Boy. The brick, the pocket, the color, uh, Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Advance SP. I have a Virtual Boy. Um, I have the GameCube. I have the N64. All my Nintendo stuff. I did the consoles. I did get rid of. I got rid of the PS1 because it was one of those things where I was like, I wasn't that invested in my PS1 games. I kind of had that for a while, and then I, I traded in. I think I actually traded in when I was trying to get the GameCube. <laughs> um, and then I used to have a PS2, uh, and I bought that just so I could play Kingdom Hearts, but I never finished Kingdom Hearts. But um, just because it, I don't know, that game took longer than I thought it would, and I just kind of lost interest. Um, but so no, I haven't really regretted getting rid of a console because I've kept, if I've liked it, I've kept it. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Nostalgia for the win, are your favorite GameCube games, if not Melee? Uh, wow, I haven't thought about GameCube in a long time. One of my favorite games to play, that I played a lot of, and it was just one of those like, it was sort of like my, like I remember for the longest time I would just come home from work and I would play, just put this on and play like just to kind of detox from the day. I played a lot of the Lord of the Rings Return of the King, that action combat fighting game that uh, EA did. Uh, it was based on the Return of the King movie and it had like all the voice actors involved and all those behind the scenes featurettes you would unlock by beating stages in it. I remember I played through that thing and you, you unlocked like all the secret characters and leveled them all up. That was, I, that just, the combat in that game, for whatever reason, just grabbed me. I loved it. I played that game a lot. So off the top of my head, I'd probably say, just because I played it that much, it would be that one. That and Time Splitters 2. I played a lot of Time Splitters 2. Um, let's see. Name a favorite video game from each system you owned and also favorite arcade game. Okay, arcade. Uh, well, lately, we, all, uh, we were at... Uh, the Gamma Trade Show in Reno, and they had a, a arcade in the uh, a hotel there that had this crazy version of Pac-Man Air Hockey, where it would spit periodically spit out all these other discs, and you're just frantically trying to, you know, knock as many of them into your opponent's goal. So, uh, if that counts as arcade, I'll say that. Um, and then for console and NES. Zelda 2. I love Zelda 2. I, I, I know I have that game. I still know the way through the Great Palace at the end of the game. I played that game so much. That was the game. It was so hard. I was like, I am going to master this game. And I did. Um, I still know the way through the Great Palace at the end. Love Zelda 2. Uh, let's see. Well, on the Game Boy, I really liked Wario Land. Um, the Super Mario Land 3. Wario Land. Actually, no. Link's Awakening was better. Um, Super Nintendo. Let's see. We'll go with... Uh, Super Mario RPG. That's my favorite Super Nintendo game. Uh, N64. Ooh, that's a tough one. It's, I'm, I'm waffling. It's either Perfect Dark or Ocarina of Time. I cannot choose between the two. Um, GameCube. I'll say Return of the King. Uh, and uh, let's see. On the Wii, which I didn't play a lot of Wii, actually, because that's when I was into World of Warcraft. <laughs> And so I bought a bunch of games and I never got around to playing much of them because I was going, I, I'd be like, all right, I'll play some video games. And someone would text me or IM me and say, hey, you want to go run a raid or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, but on the Wii, I played, gosh, I'm having a hard time thinking of what I really liked on the Wii. I'll just I'll say Twilight Princess because that's the only game I actually did play. I almost uh, I yeah I didn't like hundred percent. I didn't find everything, but I I did finish it. Um, and on Wii U, I'll say Smash Brothers. Um, and on PS One, I really enjoyed. I played Dino Crisis on PS One and had a lot of fun with it. Because like I, I didn't play I didn't play a large breadth of, of PlayStation One games. I just kind of was like oh I had a PS One and I bought a bunch of used stuff. And that's where I played. I tried some of the RPGs. Here's the thing about PS1. It's just, I'll level with you. I, had, I didn't like it because I was spoiled. I've been gaming on cartridges my whole life. And the idea of a loading screen just bugged the heck out of me. So all these, you know, PS1 games had these loading screens. And I was like, oh, come on. You know, and I was like, or I was used to playing games on a cartridge where I never had to deal with that before. And so that's one of the reasons why I didn't have a lot of patience to play through a lot of PS1 games. I know that sounds silly now, but at the time, I remember that was like my biggest beef <laughs> with, with disc-based games. Um, 
And then on PS2, I only, the only thing I ever played on PS2 was Kingdom Hearts and like one of the Street Fighter 2 anniversary collections they did at the time. Uh, so I didn't really, I don't really have a lot to say about PS2. Anyway. Hope that satisfies uh, your, the, uh, the, hope the satisfactory answer to your question. All right, I've got about uh, four minutes left here, and then I've got to go and finish up a couple of videos. Um, so, do you guys want to do the lightning round thing? I'll take a couple more questions. You guys can start shooting off some lightning round stuff, and I'll and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I, I will answer them as Strong Bad would say. Um, what is your favorite Magic the Gathering card and favorite mechanic? Okay, I only played Magic like for a little while. I got really into it like in the 20, it was the 2014 set, I think. Or which, whichever one Theros was that had Theros in it. Um, so that's all of the Magic I've really ever like played like f on a serious level. Um, I've dabbled in it before, but I never really like, I, I just, I always didn't, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money to throw up buying cards. And I, I, I got out of CCGs really quick because I hated the idea of oh, what am I going to do with all this bulk. In fact, at the our game store uh, where we have our meetup, there was somebody who was uh, on the next table over who was there just going through. He had like this big plastic drawer that was just full of bulk cards that he was going through and trying to sell off. And it like it was taking him several hours. And I was like, ah, yeah, that's that's that image right there is what keeps me from diving into CCGs. It just that doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. We we'll grab one more question from Twitch. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. Twitch wasn't super active. All right, here we go. Uh, all right. Wow, wow. Thanks for all the lightning round stuff, guys. Okay, here we go. Uh, super salad. Soup. I love soup. Soup, 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 soup. Uh, almost almost always, when, like, when we go out to eat at conventions, I almost get a soup. I almost always get a soup. I love soup. Zelda or Mario? <laughs> right now, Mario. Right now. Uh, let's see... Cheese or donkeys? Cheese. Because cheese repels invaders. Uh, strong bad or the cheat? Strong bad! Check me out! Which I guess there, there's someone's making a, a board game that's got strong bad as a theme on it. I'm kind of curious about that. I remember seeing it somewhere. It was on a Twitter tweet or something. Uh, Mario or Luigi? Mario. Vikings or aliens as far as games go? Uh, Vikings. Lately, I've been digging on Vikings. Um, chicken or beef? Chicken. Viticulture or Vinhos? Uh, I haven't played either, but if I had to choose which one I would like to try, Viticulture. Rock band or sharks? Careful with this answer. Okay. Oh, it's Pete. It, sharks. Pete. Sharks. With guitars. Uh, okay. Miss Pac-Man or Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong. I'm terrible at Pac-Man. I I've never been good at Pac-Man. <laughs> uh, Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong? Uh, I actually liked e even like. Oh, that's my wife. It's Donkey Kong. You know it's Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, that that was my wife. Everybody, Tiffany. Uh, Peach or Daisy? Uh, Peach. Editing videos or cooking? Well, I'm horrible at cooking, so editing videos. Uh, Galaga or Dig Dug? Oh, Dig Dug. I have a special place in my heart for Dig Dug. It was one of the first, uh, that's like one of the first games I played on uh, uh, on an Atari 2600, or it was some, I think it was an Atari 2600. I was, I was really, it was something my grandparents had in the closet, and they set it up for me one time when I was over visiting, and I played Dig Dug on it. So, if I, I could be, uh, it was an Atari something. I was very, very young at the time. Uh, let's see, glasses or contacts? Well, glasses, uh, I, I just recently had uh, found out I needed to be wearing glasses. And um, I won't do contacts because of one time right after I, uh, when I was dating my wife, uh, before we got married, she went and got contacts done. And like, she had this nightmare of a time trying to get them out. Like, it was super, <laughs> she was just like, 
it, it, the process didn't sell me on contacts. Let me just put it that way. It was a nightmare. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with contacts. But uh, swimming or sunbathing? Swimming. Milk or chocolate milk? Eh, chocolate milk, but I don't get to drink that much anymore. Elbows or knees? I guess elbows, sure. Heads and shoulders or knees and toes? Heads and shoulders. I'm not sure where you're going with this. The beach or the pool? Um, the pool. The beach is fine. Uh, like I said, I didn't see the beach uh, until until the year 2010. I'd never seen the ocean before because I lived in Colorado my entire life and on my honeymoon when uh, we went to Hawaii and so I got to see the ocean for the first time. Beautiful, gorgeous, uh, but it's like if I'm going to go play in the water, I'll go where I don't have to dig sand out of weird places. Um, socks or sandals? Why not both? I'm just kidding. Sandals. Um, Classic Nintendo or Nintendo Switch? I am loving the Nintendo Switch. I know that it's like super polarizing for people right now, but the Switch is awesome. I, I didn't think I'd ever say this, but it's like the fact that I, I, I'm actually willing to rebuy some of these games, like Skyrim, for example, because now that I have it on a portable, like I can play Skyrim on the airplane. Love it. Uh, showers or baths? Showers. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Beatles. Uh, karate or Kung Fu? Uh, kung Fu, because it's funner to say. Uh, night or day? Uh, here in Florida, night for sure, because, man, it gets hot during the day here. Um, I, do, I do miss having cool afternoons in Colorado, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> the talking heads or talking heads in sports? Talking heads. I just don't care about sports. Uh, all right. Takeout or buffet? Hmm, I like buffets. Buffets are fun. Rocky or Rambo? Hmm, I'll say Rocky. Solo or Jones? Solo. Uh, let's see, frozen or soft serve? Uh, I kind of like soft serve. Soft serve's fine. Close to the screen or far at a movie theater? Uh, the far. I prefer being far away. I just, uh, I don't like being stuck in a situation where I'm like, ah, I'm really uncomfortable, but if I turn my head, the screen looks a little blurry on one side. So. Um, Deep Purple or Led Zeppelin? Probably Led Zeppelin. VR or AR? AR, because it's more affordable. <laughs> um... Marvel or DC? Wow. Um, it's funny. If you would have asked me Marvel or DC as a kid, I would have said DC. But now I'll say Marvel because, man, DC's dropping the ball with these movies. Oh, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, but the animated stuff is still really good, so I, I at least have those. Uh, all right. PC or Mac. Uh, at the end of the day, I prefer PC because I'm a video gamer and, you know, there's more games that work on Steam on a PC than do on Mac. But that gap is, is bridging. It's getting better. Read a good book or watch a bad movie. I'd rather read a good book. Let's see. Cats or dogs? Uh, cats. Nothing. there's anything wrong with dogs, just cats are much slower maintenance and they're quieter. So, All right. Uh, that's, I think that's going to do it for now. Thank you all so much for, uh, hanging out with me on this Q and A. It's always fun when I get to do stuff like this kind of gets to, uh, you know, it's something out of the ordinary for me. So thank you very much. Uh, there is some more, uh, I believe Jason's got another interview from gathering scheduled for tomorrow morning. So you can be sure to tune in for that. And the, there is more dice tower history videos, uh, going up over the weekend. Um, and I believe Tom's taken this for this stretch of the series. He's taken it all the way to 2013. So uh, be sure to check those out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm Derek Porter, the Dice Tower video editor, and this has been my little live Q&A, and I'm going to queue up my outro video here. I should have had this ready to go, but I didn't, and now it goes. Okay, goodbye. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.